Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we are going to be installing a 5 kilowatt Give Energy Gen 3 hybrid inverter along with an 8.2 kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. This is going in place of an existing PV inverter system. I'm not going to comment on the installation has been completed by a another of the past. We don't have their input for context and I don't think it's fair to go around criticizing other people's work too quickly and too readily. So we're just going to focus on what we are doing through the course of this video. And there are some interesting avenues and angles for discussion, which we will jump back to and discuss through the course of this video. But without waffling on at the start for too long, let's get straight to site and see exactly what we're up to. So let's get straight to it. We've got this plastic Hager consumer unit, which is in a cupboard on the ground floor. We've got the main switch on there leading straight into a PV MCB. Unfortunately, it's underrated for the hybrid inverter we're going to be installing in this video. So we need to be making some changes inside that consumer unit and to the AC isolator as well. We do have a hole through to outside, which takes the AC up to the loft space. And we'll have a look at that in a minute because we're going to run our cables in the opposite direction bringing DC down to this cupboard space. You can see up in the loft there is no boarding, there's no loft light, there's no loft ladder and most definitely no smoke detection. So this is a bit of a grey area in terms of compliance with MCS. I'm not going to comment on that because this is somebody else's work. But we're taking this inverter out of the loft space and we're going to install a hybrid inverter and battery storage system on the ground floor in a more accessible position for the customer and also trying to factor in some element of control around the propagation of fire and the potential for that whenever we're using batteries inside somebody's home. You can see if we go and look outside, the customer does actually have an air source heat pump, so they're making every effort to get their bills down and help the environment. Matthew is currently on the phone to Joseph Valente. He's been listening to the guys on the Electrician's podcast, so Sam and Jamie, and he's trying to drum up some extra business for us, so who can blame him? He's also trying to um, get this AC cable drawn back up the conduit with some DC cables attached onto it, so we're using that as our draw wire, because as I said, we're going to bring the DC string power down into this cupboard space. That's the existing array. Again, not our work that was as we found it. And you can see Matthew here just measuring the length of DC cable he needs to fasten on while Nathan now draws that up into the loft space to join onto those existing string wires that are up there ready for us to bring that lovely eco-friendly DC energy down into our cupboard, which we'll jump back to have a look at now. Matthew's got his revenge for me mugging him off a little bit about Joseph Valente by poking that rod straight into my eye pre-recording. You see that's the DC strings now been pulled through and we're going to oversleeve that with a bit of conduit as well just to make sure we've got that taken care of in the cavity as always. So we're going to drop that down into the trunking once we've popped that conduit over these cables and we can ensure that's a safe and compliant job. So now we're going to look at the existing generation meter. We're leaving that there so there's a record of what was prior generated. This is the fireboard inside the cupboard. So there's a stud wall in there. So we've mounted a sheet of ply to give us good fixings for all the equipment we're going to mount onto there and fixed loads of screws through the concrete board into the ply and through the studs. So that is a rock solid connection. This is a Give Energy 5 kilowatt Gen 3 hybrid inverter, and you can see the guys have labeled up the PV strings inside it. We've got the battery link cable, which joins straight into the battery via an MCB um, isolation point. In this case, because we are using a Gen 1 8.2 kilowatt battery, we'll have a look at that in a minute and speak about the spacings around the inverter. I'm going to get to all of that good stuff. So you can see inside the existing consumer unit, it is a bit of um, issues in there that we're going to sort out through the course of our work. Most notably, the steel wire armor cable feeding it, and I'll leave it to your own imagination, the condition of that wiring inside the meter cabinet. Again, we will be sorting all that out, and I didn't want to take somebody else's work to pieces in this video. So we're going to move on swiftly. We do have an SPD to mount inside this consumer unit. We're going to try and rework it and reuse it. I hate waste. So if we can, we will always try and use existing equipment if it's serviceable and safe. And I think we come up with a good solution in this case. So you can see that is it all buttoned up there. We've got the SPD in next to the main switch. We've got our new C-type MCB feeding the Give Energy hybrid inverter and the Give Meter tucked away at the end. And this actually has lots of information into it. I'll speak about that 
in a minute as well. But just to say it takes its power from a local MCB just to energize it. The CT wires into the bottom terminals and goes around your line tail. And then there is a two core communication cable leading off to the hybrid inverter where it transfers lots of that data. So it makes it accessible through the app um, and helps the system work. So you can see next to the hybrid inverter, we've got that MCB, which sits in the line, sorry, in the tails between the hybrid inverter and the battery. Now the inverter needs to be 300 mil off the floor as it is here. That's a picture of the bond actually before we get into that. So you do need to make sure you put an earth bond on the inverter and the battery. So we need 300 mil top and bottom on that inverter and 250 mil between it to the wall and between any equipment. Obviously that DC MCB is a little bit close, but I figured that was fine in the circumstances. The general principle is there's ventilation around the product. There is a bit of give and take in some of these places where space is limited. And this is one of the factors is installing this equipment into people's homes. We're not all blessed with garage spaces and lots of ground floor space where this stuff can be mounted. So we're often working with what we've got in the best way we can. So you can see there you get all of the information on the side of the inverter to show exactly what this does. And the same on the battery as well. So when you're going through the commissioning stage, you do need all of this information so you can get the system set up. The customer cannot have an account or access any of the Give Energy equipment if you've not first commissioned it. And I'll speak about that at the end of the video. Just to run through the consumer unit again, I was very impressed with that meter. So I'm going to go back and push the button on the front of that loads of times and cycle through the information. Um, but it is actually quite detailed. There is loads in there. So for Anyone who's coming along to see what the system's doing at the push of a button, you've got the frequency power factor. If you're actually generating, exporting, obviously all of the historical data in terms of meter readings, which is its main purpose. And as I said, that information gets cycled off to the inverter as well. So the smoke alarm MCB is in the off position so we can install a multi-sensor smoke alarm within this cupboard space. We want to be making sure we're making every effort to alert the occupants to an issue with this equipment. Bearing in mind this is a LiPo 4 battery. They are incredibly safe compared to the old lithium ion batteries of the past. But that said, we do want to make sure there is at the very least smoke detection and we're mounting this onto a fire resistant board. See, I'm still fiddling away with that meter there, but we've got our isolation points under the consumer unit for both the AC and the DC. Ignore that steel wire armor cable it's for a shed supply. We did not put that there. See, the Give Energy Hybrid Inverter has the icons on the front to show you the direction of travel of the energy. We've got our DC MCB there, and I have shortened down these DC cables from earlier on in the video for those of you who are eagle-eyed. Um, viewers and we've also installed a blank within that as well so we've got that shortened up as far as possible popped a blank in and that is a wide angle view of the finished installation we'll speak about all the spacings in just a minute so i think that was quite an interesting installation there is a few things to discuss off the back of that um, i'm not going to delve into too much criticism of the original installation obviously we had some issues inside the existing consumer unit and also with the pv system up in the loft but we'll brush over all of that and I will not share the meter cabinet picture either. You can use your own imaginations to think of what that maybe looked like. I did just want to speak about the position of this equipment. Obviously, we've not gone for a loft location. I do want to say that the manufacturers of this equipment will all say that it's usually applicable that you can install it in those environments. They just have the temperature ratings of the products and the IP requirements of them as well. So if you're putting these outside or in loft spaces, you can do all of those things. This is just an, an engineering judgment that we've made as installers around the position that I think this equipment should be installed. And again, my own view is that any kind of route that's an escape route, so in a hallway or on a landing, for example, would be a big no-no for any of this. If it's preventing um, escape from a building, we're not going to put it in those locations. The same if it's where people are sleeping. So in bedrooms, for example, we don't want any of this equipment in and around those environments either. And at the moment, we're not putting them into loft spaces, primarily due to access and maintenance, and also the risk of the propagation of fire within a wide space of a building that could spread very rapidly around the whole place. We may be overthinking that. I've said before, the technology around life per four batteries is way beyond the lithium ion batteries of the past. And I know that lithium ion is a broad spectrum that also includes life per four, but we're talking about the way that these batteries are set up thermal runaway in a life per four battery is very very unlikely and we've seen the self-extinguishing capabilities of these battery systems as well so i am changing my views a little bit around that as we move forward and build confidence as i said we probably would do you know we're here for the engagement in learning about all of this so your feedback watching these videos has been fantastic 
I'm engaging in loads of discussions on social media with other social, um, other solar PV installers and the knowledge that they've got and learning from all of those guys and girls. There is some people who think they have lots of knowledge and share it freely and willingly online. Um, their egos are often out of control because not only are they not involved in this sector, they don't even really understand what the requirements of MCS are or the requirements of other legislation that we're all trying to work and meet. And they're just spouting their own personal views without any real context. And sometimes what the truth of things is gets lost in and around those discussions. So I'm keeping out of all of that, trying to make my own opinions known to people following along with my content. And again, just to say these videos are not educational, they are not training. That is another nonsense opinion that often gets shared by Wally's online. YouTube is not an educational metric in 99% of cases, and it most definitely is not on this channel here. I will share some technical views from time to time for people to take as they see fit. But most generally, these are vlogged videos just to share what the day-to-day -day experience of working as an electrician is like. But those are people who are thinking of entering industry, so they've got an understanding of the kind of things they might be expected to do. And because I enjoy it, I found through the course of putting myself forward on social media that I really like editing and putting together these videos. So it is just a hobby of mine as well. We need to relax a little bit on that front, I think. Um, and yeah, speaking about the install itself in that covered location, obviously there was the consumer unit in there already. It was a space that was available to us. Lots of homes don't have the luxury of garage spaces and other um, things like that that you can make use of. And this was one of those. Outside as well was a no, -no. We had the side passage where there wasn't really enough space to mount it. Um, safely for people to access and also get down there with the bins and such. There was no room on the front and who wants that system put on the front wall? Not many people. We had the air source heat pump and bifold doors at the back of the property so there was nowhere there. The loft space we've already ruled out, choice of our own, and the customer didn't want the stuff up there either. So that was um, ruled out and we were left with this cupboard location and that's what we've gone with. So in there, as I said on the video, we've got a sheet of ply, so we've got a nice solid structure to mount the equipment into and through. That's secured into the stud work of that wall and we've then got our concrete fireboard on top of that. So we have that fire resistant surface that we're mounting all of this equipment to. And we've then got to factor in the spacing around the inverter. So you need 300 mil top and bottom. And we do have that once the shelf's been moved up in that cupboard and 250 mil to the sides of the inverter. I realized that DC MCB is a little bit closer than that, but I figured it's quite a small enclosure and overall it's not affecting the um, flow of air around the product itself. Just get this phone call. So sorry about that. Where was I? It was on about airflow around the inverter. So yeah, we're trying to allow the airflow around the inverter so it's not restricted. I don't think we've got that in this case. There is good airflow in that space. And again, the battery's positioned 250 mil away from that inverter. So we're allowing that space between the two products. The battery's actually sat off the floor. It may not have appeared that way on the video, but it is just hooked onto the bracket off the floor. So it's not sat there on the carpet. There are issues around static and things that can build up between those two different types of surfaces. So we've got the separation for that. But also if there's any spillages and such, we don't want that getting straight into the battery as well. So we've factored that in. And just to say that is the Gen 1 battery, you do need the DC isolator in the power tails between the battery and the inverter, if you like. If you have the Gen 2 battery, that has the DC MCB built in. So you can just directly connect the power cable that comes off the inverter straight into the battery. Really impressed with the Give Energy system. So the commissioning that you go through, you have to actually update the software on all of the products through the cost of commissioning. You have to take some pictures and upload them. So they want to see that you've used ferrules on the DCMCB, for example. They want to see photographs of the meter and the CT clamp and a wide shot view of the installation as a whole as well. So it's all recorded on the commissioning state. It does take an amount of time usually a couple of hours or so, so you need to factor that into your jobs, especially if you've got some firmware that needs updating. And the customer can have access to their account to monitor what's going on with the system until that commissioning has been done. So it's really important as installers, we understand the need to do that. And you can't get an account with Give Energy until you've done their training course. So you need to make sure you've got through that training procedure, it's a three hour online um, course you need to sit, and then you can have a Give Energy account to commission systems. And the really good part of it that I like, it's very different to the Solax stuff we've been installing, is you can access the inverter afterwards through your own account as installers. 
So with some of the stuff we have been installing, the only way to really see what's been going on is to have the user's login details, which obviously is data protection and stuff. I don't like doing that longer term. But this way around, we can make changes to the inverter remotely. If there's some software that needs updating or the customer's having a problem, we can get in and have a look at what exactly has been going on and also see any alerts that have happened as well. So that is really useful. The Give Energy products seem really high quality. Obviously, that's the first one we've put in. There are a series of videos coming after this. The next one is a Gen 3 hybrid inverter with a Gen 2 battery. So we're trying to cover all scopes of the installation. We're not being paid or sponsored for this. It was just something I wanted to do. So we're going to jump down that rabbit hole next, have a look at the Gen 3 with a Gen 2 battery. And then we've got one of the all-in-one systems to install as well. And those things look amazing. The um, tech spec on them is far beyond much of what else is available. And the price point too, I think, give energy a really smash in that market space at the minute. And there's a few other products that have been released in a similar time frame that are nothing like as good as that. So it's super exciting for them. And I'm looking forward to making some content on that. So yeah, before I waffle on any further than necessary in the course of this video, I did just want to explain the install we've done there and set out some of the reasons um, we'd come to it really is in around the location of this stuff and as I said it's a difficult choice for us as installers there's lots of properties in this country which don't have the storage space required to fit this stuff and I totally understand lots of installers are looking at that loft space as a viable place to put it in because most homes do have that unless you're living in a flat and you know it is a, a place that this stuff can be fit into you know, if we was looking at that property, other than that small covered space, the loft was really the only other location we could put it in. And there is countless other properties like that. So it's all well and good to sit on the internet and say, I will not put batteries in a loft as I have done. Um, it has been an opinion I've shared when the reality is, if you're going to take that forward through the fullness of time, you're going to reach a point where a location to fit this stuff isn't available in somebody's home outside of that. And if the manufacturers are saying it's fine for it to go in there and we're accepting the risk of fire from life per batteries is much reduced, you know, is that really fair? I'm still umming and ahhing around that longer term. So please let me know what you think in the comments alongside this video. As I've said, we are far from experts in and around all of this. We are learning as we go. But the point of that is we want to be in the top percentage of installers that are out there and really offer excellent value to our customers. That's what it's all about. So we're going to end this one there. Please do get involved in the comments. Let me know what you think of the installation we have done. And hopefully we'll come back with some videos on the Gen 3, Gen 2 battery and the all-in-one very soon. Thanks for watching.